Welcome to the Lawrence Technological University Robotics Laboratory. Today we're going to be talking about H-bridge drivers and controlling electric motors. The reason is we have these older robotic arms. Um, basically they have a pivot down here with the motor. There's a motor that controls this joint on the, that's this motor through this gearbox, a motor for this joint, a motor to control the angle of the gripper and then another motor here. They're all DC motors and we need to be able to run them in both directions at various speeds. So we're going to be building an H-driver circuit um, to to run those motors independently. Um, one nice thing about this little device here, it has its own built-in power supply with a, a transformer. It puts out about 18 volts uh, peak to peak. There's a bridge rectifier in here, some filter capacitors. So we have our own power supply, we have the motors, and on each joint we also have a potentiometer so we can sense the angle. So we have everything we need to, to make the things move and, and understand where it is. But what we need now is, is to make a driver that will control this through whatever device we prefer. We could use, say, an Arduino board to control this. We could use our own home-built microprocessor board like that. Um, we have up here, we tilt the camera. We have these National Instruments I.O. devices which will connect to the PC through a um, USB cord. We have digital inputs, digital outputs, or analog inputs, analog outputs, digital outputs that we can use to control our boards. And it'll all work from a PC using the lab view. So to start out with, we're going to talk about what's inside a DC motor, how it works. From there, we'll go into the uh, develop the theory of the circuitry that we use to drive these motors, an uh, H-bridge driver. And we'll talk about the design, the circuit we're going to use for these actual robot arms. Then from there, we'll go to putting the circuit together, soldering it up on a breadboard. We'll show you some breadboarding techniques. And finally, we'll actually um, have it run their arm and see how it works. But let's start with the components of the DC motor. This is the housing for the motor, if I bring it up here. Um, inside, we have permanent magnets that create a magnetic field permanently, as you might guess. Um, that's one piece of the motor operation. Another piece is the armature which fits inside this permanent magnet. And the armature is essentially a rotating electromagnet. It has the iron cores and then the windings around each segment of the core. And these windings are connected to a segmented copper piece called a, called a commutator. And then the power gets to the commutator through these brushes here, which if I can spread these without my fingers getting in the way. You can see those two brushes here and here will rub on the commutator. And as they rub on the commutator, it charges portions of this. It sends current through these windings to create a magnetic field in one direction. And as we turn this, I don't know if you can see it, but there are gaps in this commutator here, there, and there. So as the brushes contact it in this turns, the connection between the brushes and these windings changes in terms of what's connected. And when it turns 180 degrees, you've actually reversed the connection. So what happens as you cross each segment, the orientation of the magnetic field relative to this armature keeps changing. So, but the orientation of the magnetic field relative to the brushes stays relatively constant. So we have a magnetic field that rotates relative to the armature, but since it's rel a constant relative to the, um, to the brushes and to the DC or the permanent magnet in here, it's that relationship between this generated magnetic field and this magnetic field on this permanent magnet that causes the motor to rotate. So on the board, I have a very simplified drawing. We have our permanent magnet. We have in blue here the commutator, which is in this case just drawn as two segments. 
and we have the brushes in red, which are connected to our power and our ground, and we have the green representing the windings on that armature. So that if it's connected as it's drawn, and I've created a south pole at the end of this, this end of the armature and a north pole at this end of the armature, you know, as an electromagnet, this south pole is going to be attracted there, this north pole is going to be attracted there, and we're going to rotate this way. Okay? But as we get close enough, what will happen is, instead of touching the commutator as it does now, it'll rotate, we'll go past this flank spot, and we'll actually touch, this brush will touch this portion of the commutator, this brush will touch this portion of the commutator, and our the magnetic field that we're inducing is going to switch to be the other direction, south and north, but since we're already past this north pole, and this is past the south pole, it'll keep rotating to go to the next position. Okay? Well, normally, um, a DC motor, brush DC motor like this, doesn't have just one set of coils. It has many, but this is a simplified operation, er, explanation. Now, if I want to turn the motor to turn in the other direction, if I make this negative, this positive, then I've changed the polarity of the magnetic field and it will want to rotate in the other direction because instead of making this south, which is tracked that north, this is now north, which is attracted to this south, and this is south, which is attracted to that north. So by switching the direction uh, of the current flow, we change the direction that the motor rotates. And as you can see, uh, the motor has a number of different components. You have the brushes, which conduct electricity and bring it into the armature. You have the commutator, which controls how that magnetic field is generated in that armature and the direction of that magnetic field. And then you have the coils that generate that magnetic field.